guys and welcome back to another album review. So this one goes a little outside of my norm because we're going into one today from a band I have actually never heard a single song from in my life. And some of you are thinking, Jen, you were around in the 90s. Bullshit. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. No, legit. I never have. And we are talking about Oasis. <laughs> Which, the only reason I didn't was my own very naivete in the 90s, being like, oh, they called themselves the next Beatles, well, fuck them. <sighs> 30 years have passed. I've had time to take a breath. And in light of whatever the announcement tomorrow, although by the time this goes up, it'll be today, uh, is, seemed like a perfect time to take my own Oasis virginity, you know? So, no better place to start than at the start, so I'm gonna listen to the Definitely Maybe album and give you my thoughts, track by track, as I listen to it, and maybe I'll end up loving it, maybe I'll end up being like, eh, I, I wasn't wrong to have skipped them all this time, I don't know, this could go either way just as easily, so for science, for science, we're doing this. So without further ado, let me go listen to that first track. All right, so the first track is called Rock and Roll Star, and admittedly, looking at the lyrics, they're not the world's most inspired lyrics, let's be real, but on the other hand, I have to admit, first track in, I'm already surprised at how much more I liked this than I expected to. <laughs> So, I mean, the guitars especially on it, just very on point with the kind of things I like. It's hard to articulate what exactly I mean by that, especially if this is like the first you've ever seen of me on YouTube. But, um, I don't know, it both harkens back to a kind of classic rock inspiration without sounding like an imitation and sounding for what was then 90s modern. You know? So, I I don't know. If the whole album's like this, I, I'm kind of scared to say it too early. We are only on track number one out of 11. So, but I tentatively, I'm like, oh, if this is what they sound like, I, I might like them. I might like them. I liked this song anyway. We'll continue on. So second track in is Shaker Maker, and admittedly, we are two for two in me not hating this. Oh my god. So this one really does harken back to a 60s sound, but with a more modern flair on it. And this is where, okay, now I get why both they themselves and other people have compared them to the Beatles, because alright, alright, I saw it with this one. Well, heard it, rather, but, um, again, the lyrics, kind of nonsensical, but then again, comparing it to the era of the, of the Beatles that I feel it sounds like, that's kind of on par, and may have been intentional, so that's not a deal breaker there, but I'm like, the jangly guitars and everything, I just, huh, okay, strong showing so far, I'm kind of curious to see how this keeps going after this. I'm just like, on a first time listen, knowing absolutely nothing about this band going in, besides like, that the two brothers fight, and that they made themselves out to be the next Beatles. That was all I knew going in. So, this is quite enlightening. So track three is called Live Forever, and now we're back to a more 90s kind of stereotypical pop rock kind of a sound on this one, at least musically. Vocally, uh, this is the first one where I'm like, mm, I don't know about this one, because it's just like that nasally kind of whiny sound. Not a huge fan of that. But, but don't write me off yet. I, Looking at the lyrics of this one, especially objectively compared to the first two tracks, this one is stronger lyrically than the other two put together. So, what it may have lacked on the vocals, it makes up for in the lyrics, I feel. 
so it's still worth the time of day and might be one of those songs that could grow on a person with repeated listenings. It definitely has potential, musically and everything, so. So fourth track in is called Up in the Sky, and this is another one that has like that stereotypical like 90s rock sound. I'm not saying that in a bad derogatory way, I'm just saying that's what it sounds like. Um, but I do like this one more, musically and everything. Lyrically, a little lacking. Um, mostly to me, if you just read the lyrics, apart from the song, but just on their own, it kind of smacks of like, you know when people just start attempting to write poetry and they're so hung up on making everything rhyme that everything else falls flat and it A kind of loses a message and B it just feels clunky? That is what those lyrics read like to me. However, in just listening to the song itself, you don't notice that nearly so much. It's only when you just look at the lyrics themselves on their own. I guess I'm spoiled by the artists that I like generally having lyrics that are a bit higher caliber, but I mean, just as, you know, a silly pop song, I don't hate it. Which I think is probably going to be the tagline of my review, which is, I didn't hate it. <laughs> so fifth track in is entitled Columbia, and this one, it just, it's kind of, um, almost, almost like one of those slow jams, but not really slow, if that makes sense, but slow comparatively to the other ones that have preceded it on here. The lyrics almost fade into the background. I mean, you can hear them, but they are not the focal point here. The music is the focal point on this one. Um, that said, it's a six minute song, kind of stretches on at least two minutes too long, in my opinion. That wasn't wild on this one. It was just, eh. <laughs> Kept checking the time. How much more is there of this one? This one was like, eh. No, this I think was more like what I think in my head I had envisioned Oasis sounding like was something like this, actually. So, I don't know. This might be a one-off, or maybe I pegged them more accurately than I thought I did. We shall see. Okay, sixth track in is called Supersonic. I think this was one of the ones that came out as a single from this, according to Wikipedia. So anyway, this one does, even more so like the last one, sound like what I imagined Oasis would sound like. But this one at least has better lyrics. This one, from what I can gather, seems to be about fame and what fame looks like. But whether or not he's speaking from experience or what he thinks fame looks like, that is what the lyrics consist of here. There is one nod to the Yellow Submarine, so again, with the Beatle thing, but um, it's not bad. It almost has a little bit of a not quite alternative feel, but uh, it's not bad. I'm kind of neutral about it, leaning slightly in the direction of I think I like it, but again, I might need a few more listens to really decide one way or the other. I might just be biased because of the Yellow Submarine mention. I don't know, but but I don't hate it. <laughs> I know, I said that it was probably going to be the whole thing that this hinges on, but I think I knew myself well here. Okay, so the seventh song in is called Bring It On Down, and honestly, this one might be my favorite one so far listening through this. Uh, the guitar work on it reminds me a lot of U2's Vertigo, even though this came first by like, what, 20 years or something? Maybe 10 years, I forget when that came out, but regardless, Regardless, that's what it reminds me of uh, with the guitars and something just about the tempo of it. Now, the vocals on it, they're very distorted, so good luck telling what they're singing unless you're looking at the lyrics, but lyrically this one's one of the stronger ones comparatively when looking at the whole album. But yeah, I like this one. I like this one a lot. Okay, so the eighth track is called Cigarettes and Alcohol, and... The guitar on this one, and the drums, the musicality of it does sound more throwback rock and roll. Uh, something about, I can't put my finger on what though, something musically makes me think of the Stones a little bit here. But again, I can't put my finger on what it is, I just know that it's exactly what I thought of immediately when I heard this one. And then, lyrically, this one stronger, uh, but there's certain lines in it, like when it hits the end of 
certain lines, like the first line, like, is it my imagination? The way that he sings it. Something about it makes me think of Johnny Rotten a little bit. A little bit. And I'm like, huh, not sure if it's the accent thing or I don't know. But it's kind of interesting that of all the people that this song could have reminded me of, these two, this combo of two, Stones and Johnny Rotten, I'm like, okay, alright, this one's alright, this one's alright, but yeah, I'm just like, okay, you know, again, like, most of the way through this album, I'm like, maybe I have been robbing myself by not giving Oasis a chance all this time, wow. So the ninth track is in is called Digsy's Dinner, and of course the first thing my brain thought is Digsy sounds like a dog's name, so my brain's thinking, Digsy's Dinner, Dog, Dog's Dinner? Is it supposed to be like a British thing, like Dog's Dinner? So, because <laughs> that is, you know, I think Cockney rhyming slang, uh, slang, but I could be wrong on that, but the song itself has little to nothing to do with that. Uh, musically, it kind of sounds a little bit like 60s garage band, if that makes sense. But lyrically, kind of a silly little song, but it caught my attention in all of the Beatle comparisons made with Oasis that I'm like, wait, is this their take of trying to write a song in the style of Paul McCartney, maybe? Correct me if I am completely off base here, but that is what I thought of with this one, because I was just like, what does this sound like? And I'm thinking about it, I'm like, wait, wait, I think I know. And that's what I came up with, so again. But I enjoyed it, silly song or not, but I was just like, oh, okay, it's catchy. It's a shorter one, it's only about two and a half minutes long versus most of the songs on here that are at least four, if not longer, but still, catchy little thing. Okay, we are almost through it. So 10th track is Slide Away, and while lyrically nothing to write home about. Musically, this one really, I think, sums up what I think of as being the Oasis sound. And not just that, but also kind of like the sound of like early-ish to mid-90s, if that makes sense. I'm also, having listened to this one, having this feeling of deja vu of, I think maybe I did in fact hear this back then at some point and didn't consciously know it was Oasis, but I'm like, I've heard this before. I don't know where. I don't know when. I've heard this one before. Somewhere. At some point. <laughs> but I don't think I knew who did it. But I think it was one of those things that must have just been so just pervasively everywhere at the time that I'm like, must have been impossible to dodge that one because I'm like, I could swear I've heard this, but again, I couldn't tell you any kind of specifics on that. But this one, I mean, I'm just like, it's okay. It's okay. Um, maybe because I like the ones that feel more 60s-esque. This one doesn't to me. This one feels more 90s-esque, but, um, but it's all right, though. I don't hate it. But it was bizarre just that, like, brain flash moment of, <gasps> I've heard this one. I don't know where, though. But I know I've heard this one. <laughs> and something, like, and it had to have been back then, because it, like, instantly, like, for some reason, flash of just sitting on the living room floor It like, maybe, I don't know, nine years old or so, <laughs> uh, watching TV, and it had to have been on something. It had to have been on something, because I have for sure heard that. Anyway, so the last track on here is called Married with Children, and I am again having that deja vu feeling of I don't know where or when I've heard this, but I, I feel like I know this one too, which is a really weird feeling for somebody who is so confident that they'd gone their whole life without ever having heard an Oasis song, but now I'm like, oh, maybe I did without realizing. <laughs> well, I didn't consciously know I'd heard them, but I feel like I knew this one. Um, lyrically, though, this one is another one that kind of hits me like, ah, somebody just learning how to write poetry and they're still new at it. It's still not as smooth as it could be. It kind of feels like that. Um, I'm trying to think of what exactly 
the musicality sounds like. But, um, it's essentially little more than just like a guitar and a bass. Not quite acoustic, but definitely stripped down. But it's not bad. It's not bad at all. And honestly, thinking of this album and everything on it, I think I would give it like a 7 out of 10. And I cannot believe those words are coming out of my mouth for somebody who so hardcore rejected Oasis at every turn for all these years. I listened to the album once and I'm giving it that high of a rating. I kind of get it now. I think I kind of get why people like Oasis. Am I saying that I'm instantly a fan? No, but I'm saying that I get the appeal. And I think I might give more of their stuff a shot, maybe. <laughs> uh, it also is not lost on me that listening to it on Spotify it has the original release date listed at the bottom. It's August 29th, 1994. And I'm like, I'm even doing this almost on the 30th anniversary to the day. I swear to God, that had nothing to do with this timing. But I'm like, whoa, that's okay. That's goosebumpy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, all right, this, I guess I kind of see why pretty much my whole life people finding out I'm a Beatle fan, like, but do you like Oasis? And I was always like, no, but then again, I've also never listened to them to find out, to be fair. But um, now I'm like, oh, uh, maybe I should have a hell of a lot sooner. Better late than never, right? Okay, I can admit when I'm wrong. And I think I may have been, o I was just naively wrong about Oasis. This is kind of like how I felt with the monkeys after how many years I had rejected them and then finally gave them a chance and was like, oh my god, this is my new favorite thing. I don't think I feel that strongly about Oasis, but I, I definitely see the appeal. And I definitely see the Beatle inspiration that kind of flows throughout it, which is cool as a Beatles fan. So, it's not annoying in the way that I thought it was going to be. But then again, I've gotten better at tamping down my music snobbiness over the years. So, anyway, those are my thoughts. Take them or leave them for somebody who literally had never listened to Oasis before today. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that is it for this one, guys. So as usual, you know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe. Hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload. Leave comments down below. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Facebook fan page, my Twitter, my Instagram, my eBay, my Reddits, everything and more is all down below. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. Get your name on the end card for a month from the time of donating. Anyway, guys, till next time, see ya.